Ladies and gentlemen, this week's edition of, uh, of Lanky Legends, we're delighted to get hold of former Lancashire England all-rounder, uh, uh, captain, coach, head of cricket at Lancashire, an integral part of Lancashire's uh, successes in, in the late 80s and the 90s. Great teammate of ours along, alongside the likes of Austin, Fairbrother, uh, and Hughes and people like that. A great friend of ours, Mike Watkinson. Winker, how are you doing, pal? I am, I am Warren. All right, good to see you, mate. Are you keeping well, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm doing okay. Managed to top the tan up the last few weeks. We've had some belting weather. So, yeah, been, been you okay. Look a million still dollars. You look a million dollars. Well, we always do, though, <laughs> don't you? You always did look a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to make an effort, haven't you? I've been working all morning. Like working? What, 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 what do you mean? What have you been doing? Yeah, well, um, we've been director of sport at Manchester Grammar School and looking after all the the P and sport lessons. We're still doing uh, remote teaching at the moment, so we've got all P and swimming lessons we are doing via the internet. So I've just had uh, a year nine P lesson where all the boys have got assigned the program and we explain what they want them to do and they, uh, they upload pictures of themselves doing it. And we're just trying to make sure that the, the education that they want is, is exactly what they're getting really. And that involves um, physical exercise, which is, uh, is very important at, at this particular time. So, okay, Winky, let's talk about, let's talk about, about your career and, and the, the, the things that, that you remember from, from Lanx. You were at Lanx for a hell of a long time and you're, you're an integral part, mm. as we've already said, of our successes over, the, uh, over the, those really good times of the 90s. But early days, you know, you're a Bolton lad, you're born and mm. raised in Bolton. Where did it all start for you? Um, I started at West Orton Cricket Club. Um, I was about 10 years old. Um, my dad was a keen sportsman. My uncle had played in the league and um, he just bought me some boots and dropped me off on a Friday night and said, hey, uh, get, get stuck into some cricket practice. Um, took me down to West Orton Cricket Club. The guy who ran everything was called Teddy Gerrard. He did all the junior training. Yeah. So um, there was only under 18s then, no junior teams, no under 13s, no under 15s. So we used to go down on practice and chase the ball around for the big lads, go to the yeah. chippy for them afterwards and get about when it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it's all started. I stayed at West Orton until 1980. We won the, the championship and then I, I left and had a couple of years pro-in with, uh, with British Aerospace in, in the association. Did you? Well, that's 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 it. That's interesting. You know, you, you you mentioned West Orton. You mentioned the Bolton Cricket League, and West Orton's historic for 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 the great players over the years that have played there. And and the Bolton Cricket League, I, I was lucky enough to have a, a couple of seasons in it. But do, do you think that shaped you as a as the cricketer you turned out to be? Yeah, it, it's tough cricket. And and yeah. when I was um, at West Orton, the pro was Arthur Sutton, who was captain of Cheshire. And he was a, a little feisty, left-handed batter. He, he bowled um, flat off spinner. He was aggressive. He was about five foot six or seven. Yeah. Um, a real tough cricketer. And I learned a lot from him. Um, I did have a season playing with, with Cheshire in 1982, I think. Yeah. Um, the same season I made my debut for Lanx. And that, that helped shape me a little bit. I, I didn't pull up a lot of trees, but it was a good experience playing against better cricketers than myself and uh, and playing the odd two-day game as well. You, you, met, you mentioned your, your, your debut for Lanx as well. We, had, we, had a, we, we spoke to our other, our other teammate, Harv, uh, and, he, yeah. um, and, and he, men, he mentioned his debut, and it's pretty, pretty similar to you. Tell us a little bit about that. It always intrigued me. Yeah, I, I listened to your chat with Harv the other day, and all the memories came flooding back because I made my debut in the same game in very similar circumstances. Um, I was uh, working uh, for William Hare, the structural engineers, who um, was owned by the Hodgkiss family, who um, sadly David Hodgkiss passed away recently, the, uh, the chairman of, of Lancashire. But it was his family that, uh, that owned the company. And uh, John Savage got in touch with me, um, I think it was late on Friday afternoon, yeah. and, and said, um, we want you to come down to Old Trafford and, and play against Kent in a three-day game. Saturday, Monday and Tuesday. Um, I said, well, I'm, I'm sub pro on Saturday. He said, well, we'll send Bernard Reedy down. He can sub pro for you. Um, and I'm going to have to get Monday and Tuesday off work. So I went and spoke to uh, 
to Bartle, who was David Hodgkiss's father. Right. Um, and uh, he gave me a couple of days off work and I went and made my debut against Kent at Old Trafford. And, and I was like, Harvey, this was... Um, I hadn't even played a second team game at that stage. I played uh, a little bit in the under 25s competition, but I've never played a three day game in my life. And I was asked to go and play in Lang's first team against Kent. Um, so I'm thinking, well, what, what am I going to wear? <laughs> first of all, they've all got blazers, what am I going to wear? So uh, I rock up in my petrol blue suit and my, uh, my Spando Valley fringe and my burgundy leather shoes on. And uh, I walk in the dressing room, I can see them all looking at me thinking, who's this bloke? And then they went, no, no, you don't get changed in here. You're, you're next door, you're in the dog zone. You know, this is the first team dressing room. You don't, you have to knock on the door before you come in. I thought, all right, this is all right, isn't it? And, uh, but again, there, were, there was Yozza, Simo, um, Bumble, Frank, um, all playing in the game. Um, but you're at an age where, yes, you're nervous, but you're not faced by the opposition the same as you are when the expectations are higher. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking at the team sheet and I'm thinking, we've got uh, Underwood, Knott, Dilly, Woolmer, <laughs> and here's me. I've just, I, was, I should have been playing for British Aerospace against Aston Tilsley Collieries. <laughs> Here I am making my debut at Old Trafford. <laughs> and who was overseas player at the time? It, 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 was, it, was, the, it was your Clive. Own... Clive was overseas player. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, Clive was captain. Was he? Yeah, I remember walking out on the on the field. Clive's captain, you know, with his, with his big floppy hat on, come rain or shine, and you know, the, the glasses strapped on, the elastic bands around the back of his head, and you're walking out onto the field behind him. And I'm thinking, I'm just pinching myself here, um, walking out behind the captain of West Indies, great man, Clive. That's, that's, that's unbelievable. I always think back to, to you and Harvey on that time when, when, when that, that, whenever that's mentioned. And can you imagine that happening these days? Can you imagine that happening? I can't see that happening. No, the, I messaged Harvey and we, were, we, we swapped a, a few comments after he, he'd done his, uh, his interview with you the other day because lots of memories came flooding back. And, and we did talk about how lucky we were to play in that era, but also to play in a more modern era as well. Yeah. Um, two styles of cricket really were, there's some unbelievable characters in the game when we started. Um, it was hard, it was tough, it was a lot of fun. Um, you got a lot of advice and a lot of management, but you didn't get a lot of technical coaching. No. Um, and that's why you got people with weird and wonderful actions and, and crazy stances. <laughs> um, but cricket was really, really tough. Nowadays, you know, everything is dissected, isn't it? The, the, you've got the analyst, you, you've got the biomechanics man, you've got everything. He'll sort your balance out, your trigger movements and all the rest of it. Um, it the 70s and early 80s, when you're making your way out in the game, the coach used to say, uh, you're bowling down the leg side, stop it. <clears throat> and you'd have to go and work it out yourself. <laughs> yeah. You keep getting caught in the slips. Do something about it. Stop wafting your bat. <laughs> you know, why am I wafting your bat? You had to work it out yourself. Um, so it was tough. And, and, and keeping your job in that, that the, the, the competition for contracts was massive then. Yeah. You know, a little two-year contract here, two-year contract there. The pressure was unbelievable. But the cricket was fun. It really was. There's some, there's some great time and some great characters around. They was and that for, for me that sticks in my mind of our time together that long time that we we shared in a dressing room uh, and it keeps coming back to it we were a good team but we had some we had some serious serious fun as well and yeah. uh, you know we had characters in our dressing room you, you know you, you've got your big international players and then you've got the group of homegrown in, English Lancashire players and then yeah. you've got some some overseas player that are, that, that are dropping. Uh, in our time, we were lucky to have the likes of Patrick Patterson um, and, of course, Wazim Akram. Yeah. Yeah, we had some great overseas players who dropped in and they became part of us. Yeah. Um, you know, Clive, still connected with the clubs, that's still around, still available. Yeah. Um, uh, Pato, Waz. Um, you got to remember as well that there was a period where we would have two overseas players like that and one of them would play in the second team. 
Um, so you, you, you'll be turning up against the second team, and they'll be wheel, you'll be wheeling Pato out against them. <laughs> you can see them all, all these young these young trialists from from these uh, these public schools <laughs> with the, with the, the the segmented hats on and all the rest of it, walking around those Pato warming up. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so second team cricket was was tough as well. But we did. We we had a lot of fun with with lads who'd grown up in local leagues, yeah. and then some really outstanding overseas players who who became part of us. And I think our most successful periods were when, yeah, we had a lot of fun. There was a lot of banter, but we we were we were critical of each other at the right times within the team. Yeah. You know, it wasn't all lovey-dovey stuff. Mm-hmm. Somebody wasn't doing the job. They got told about it. You had yeah. to sort yourself out. No, and there's, there's a lot of pressure with that. You know, mm-hmm. you'd, uh, you know, your Yozas and, and Sim or Fow, people like that, they just, they wouldn't, they wouldn't stand for it. You yeah. know, you weren't pulling your weight. You got told about it straight away. Yeah, absolutely. That was a good thing. Honest, honesty was a massive thing in that, in that yeah. dressing room. But while we're on it, and while it's in my mind, I've got to talk about. I remember a situation that you had us in stitches with, and and you had a, you had a, a whole season of of constructing a list of names that were made up that you could give to Matt Proctor to put out in over the over the uh, oh, over the PA system. You know, oh, this, is a, this is a memory test now. <laughs> no, I've got a couple for you, and the one that always sticks in my mind that was 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 one would. Would it was would Mr. Dwayne Pipe please report yeah. to the cricket office reception? We have a problem with the leak in the uh, the old pavilion or something like that. And yeah. and you would you had a list. You must have had two hundred yeah. names on that list. Yeah, yeah. We, it became a bit of a the, the things that you would not get away with these days. Um, <laughs> well, you got to keep yourself occupied. Um, Always liked a bit of fun, even yeah. though um, I didn't always show that. But uh, I, I did like a good laugh, um, and and constructing these names and trying to get them past PA announcers was uh, was something we tried all the time. <laughs> Matt Proctor, he uh, we used to find different ways of getting messages to him, like um, the um, the visiting um, overseas team's bowling coach, Man in the Moon. It was the slow left arm ball and man in the moon. We had um, what about Terry Fider work? Yeah, Terry Fider work. Uh, Ray Von Man. Um, actually, when I went on tour with England and uh, I did a lot of sitting around then because I didn't play much cricket. We did the same over there. Um, and then the um, I remember the South African PA announcers. They they fell for it up like an up line and sinker. They just wanted to be on the and list themselves speaking you know mr branston pickles and things like that we had we had some crazy <laughs> names <laughs> and we did we, yeah. we we used to we used to giggle and we used to yeah. we used to have a but like you said you you shape yourself into into an all-rounder you know you're you're, you're in the ten thousand runs a thousand wickets for, for lancashire which is not many people did that and uh, mm-hmm. and for someone who came from like you mentioned those humble beginnings of starting at west Orton on a friday night with your boots you know, that yeah. must be something that, that, that's, that's built from within the character you are. Yeah, it was a tough upbringing in the Bolton League and you, you had to get stuck in. You had to be a certain character to survive. Um, we had Shawnee, Ronnie Irani, um, players who came through a similar time to myself. Um, I like to think that I was in teams with, better, with much better players than myself, but I always try to get stuck in. I would always, um, it was nostrils down, we used to talk about that. Who's going to bowl into the wind? Nostrils down, the uh, wind can get the ball, um, somebody else can bowl at the other end, which was fine, but because you're appreciated for doing your job. Um, you know, I got asked, Clive asked me to bowl some spinning again. In the end, it was a fantastic thing, but as bowling spin, Seeing, batting, fielding, mm. <laughs> doing every little bit okay, but it was the sum of the parts really, um, rather than being an absolute crackerjack in, in one discipline. I suppose that was my game, 
And that was a lot of that was from throwing in the leagues, I would think, where they throw you the ball, you'd have to go 25 overs. Yeah. You're charging like a lunatic until 10 or 12 overs. Then you bowl some fast off cutters and then you bowl some seamers at the end trying to get your wicket bonus up. And yeah. um, I suppose that kind of upbringing where you're not getting the ball out of my hand, you want yeah. to bowl all the time, was something that, that stood me in good stead when I went into, into the professional game. You were, and we, we talked about, to, to the lads that we've talked about from our in around that area, the amount of games that, that you won either with, with bowling, bowling seam uh, at the death, uh, smacking a quick, a quick 80 to, to win as a game, or, or, or when we turn to, to your spin later on, which we'll touch on, you, you won us so many, so many games. And, and like you said, like, like myself, like the likes of Ian Austin, we weren't world-class cricketers. We were world-class cricketers, but we found a little bit extra when it needed uh, um, yeah. to, for, for that pride of playing for Lancashire. Yeah. Well, that successful team, when we were doing well, everybody was capable of winning a game. Yeah. And it was, who's, who is it going to be today? Everybody has to give themselves a chance of being that person. And it won't be you every week. Yeah. But when you need it, when others are not having their day, then you have to try and make it yours. And if everybody's got that mentality, somebody will put their hand up. And the lost causes, we never knew what a lost cause was. No. Um, that game at, at the Oval, where we were dead and buried and we got yeah. all the wickets. Um, you know, eight, nine and over was unheard of in, in 80s and early 90s. Now yeah. they get it easy. But yeah. we, we used to call ourselves the Thunderbirds, didn't we? Sat there waiting to bat. <laughs> and you'd say, what, what number's written on the end of your bat handle, Warren? Oh, it's, it's eight on here. That means we need eight and over. Oh, well, are you going in now? Uh, but what have you got, Bully? I've got nine. All right, well, well, you can hang on a minute till it gets up to nine and over. And we'd, we'd be out on the field and they'd be like, <laughs> like men don't have this. would be patting it up and down a little bit and saying, they're just trying to get the run rate high enough for us so, so the Thunderbirds can go in and do a bit of an international rescue job. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. And, and like you said, we, 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 the likes of Atherton and, 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 and Mendo when he played, beautiful little 90s and 100s, yeah. and then we'd have to come and throw ourselves out shivering and covered in crap and everything yeah, like that. You would, and you'd look at the averages at the end, and they'd be averaging, uh, one day averages um, 33, 34, we'd be there, 12, 18, <laughs> wouldn't we? Having to wipe all the mud up our pads every week, like you said, because we've been diving in for runouts and, and sweeping and thrutching around. <laughs> Brilliant days. But, but like you said, great days at Lords, weren't they, as well? We touched it with everyone, but yeah. those days. What, one thing that sticks in my mind is we, we, uh, uh, um, a final at Lords, and you used, to, you, used to, you used to sit in the corner and you used to look through a long, thin window. Yeah, well, nerves affect people in different ways, don't they? Yeah. You know, I, I, Harv was the same. Um, we used to always sit in our places. If you had to bat after half, you had to have your wits about you because he'd be off to the loo every two minutes. You'd be pads on, pads off, and then you thought, God, I'll just keep them on <laughs> in, ca in case he gets caught short. You, know, you don't have that now, change the batting order. Where is he? Oh, he's he, he nipped to the loo. It just doesn't seem to happen anymore, but it happened every week with us. Oh, <laughs> so be, you'd have to put them on to cover somebody. Um, yeah, but peeping out, the, the viewing area at Lords is very tight. As you know, that balcony is quite snug, isn't it? So we all get our little bits for, for watching through little uh, arrow slit windows and you're yeah. peeping out onto the pitch. And I suppose it's nerves. You know, I, I, was, a, I was a very nervous watcher, especially when we batted. Yeah. Um, it got even worse. When I became head coach and then director and I was watching, my nerves became worse, I think, in, in really? watching the game. It was horrendous. I remember at Sussex, we were, we were trying to bat a draw out in a very crucial game at um, when Mustang was running through us. And I, I was uh, head coach. I was just lying down in the dressing room. I couldn't watch. <laughs> I just couldn't watch. And... I can't remember, John Wood or somebody thrust it out and we, we and they came in and said, that's it, which I thought, can we go? And I, I just couldn't watch. Yeah, you know, just I mean, nerves get to you. I remember Bondi being like that as well. Bondi disappeared. You'd have an important game, was Bondi. 
he'd, he'd gone for a walk. He, he just couldn't cope with it. What? That's that amazing. What 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 nerves? What nerves yeah. do? But you had a spell. Let, let, let's just got, get back to you know cha the changing up of games and the changing of formats and the changing of, of thought processes. Yeah, and yeah. the thought process that was decided as a team that we needed to have uh, a quicker start in one-day games. Remember, oh, I think we yeah. might have even still been wearing whites then, Winker, with a red, with a red ball. And and the um, and the thought of us having this new theory of the pinch hitter came in, yeah. and you and you you were our man to do that. How did you find that? Um, I enjoyed it. I'd uh, I'd had most of my one-day career up to then, but in five and six. Yeah. Um, I suppose I always had the ability to to clonk it in like like yourself, squirt it into some strange areas, and and have our stronger areas for our bigger shots. Yeah. Um, and it was a time when bowlers hadn't quite got slow balls like they had now. I think that would have stuffed me up a little bit. Um, and uh, having a go opening in the batting was was something that that just gave me a little bit of an extra boost in one day cricket towards the the back end um i wasn't uh, probably wasn't set the same frontline bowler that i'd used to be but the batting was all right as as opening the batting i quite enjoyed it you know you'd open with others um and he would look to, to back through and and you'd try and get your 20 or 30 as quick as you can and then you you get out of it and somebody else take over yeah, some great, some great, some great knocks and some great starts. That was that was the foundation to uh, to us winning many one day games. Yeah, I, I smile as well about some of them. Where you think others is briefest to bat through, and yours is to get us off to a, a flying start. I remember playing at, at, at Old Trafford against Somerset. It was a howling gale downwind, Caddick's bowling downwind, and Graham Rose is trundling into the breeze. Others is patting them back from Graham Rose and shouldering arms. I couldn't get up the other end. I'm throwing Caddick off my throat at the other end and I'm supposed to be hitting him for straight sixes. I'm thinking, Others, we're at the wrong end here, pal. But he was happy just knocking them back and shouldering arms at the other end. You see him giggling. I can just see him giggling under his helmet yeah. thinking, go on, yeah. Mike. Yeah, and right. I'm getting rattling round. I'm catching it between me inner thighs. That was one. Of, that was one of my best shots. That wasn't it. <laughs> Catch it between your inner thigh, pick it out, and throw it back to the ball. And it's like a burning cinder. The pain you've got <laughs> in your inside of your leg. <laughs> but, but let's let's <laughs> great brilliant memories of of what we used to do. But let's talk about you know you reach the pinnacle of any professional cricketer's dreams and you. You, you played cricket for England. You pulled on the three lines um, in both formats of the game, test matches and one day international. That must have been massively proud for, for the Bolton lad. <laughs> it, it was. Um, you know, as a, as a lad growing up in Bolton cricket, I just wanted to play for Lancashire. Um, and then when I got into Lancashire's team, 87 was a, was a transformation year for me. Um, just in the, the build up to, to get into the international cricket, 87 um, was the year that I got told at the start of the season that you won't bowl seam anymore. That's it. And it was written into my contract, I had pencil written over my contract, which said, You don't bowl seamers anymore, wow. you just bowl spin. Because in 86, Clive had asked me to experiment with some spin because we're behind on over rate. And yeah. I got a few people out. Um, and Bondy liked it, and Clive liked it, so I got a contract in 87 that said, you don't bowl seam anymore. So I didn't play the first third of the season. We got knocked out of the Bensons. Yeah. I'd been a regular in the team. We got Simon and, and Foll, Ian Foley, mm. who were regulars with with the, the spin slots, and I wasn't getting, getting a go in the team. Yeah, I remember. Um, and there was a little bit of... It's nice from my point of view. There's a little bit of player power with, uh, you know, there's Walt Fow, Yozza, um, some of the the, uh, the established players saying, this kid's not too bad, you know, and he's not in our team. Something's not right. Mm. And we got a few injuries with Seamus. And I remember Yozza saying to me, Yozza was captain then, and, uh, and Ormus was, um, was coach. Uh, and Yozza said, we've got some injury problems. Um, you're playing in the second team this afternoon. Um, just get a few seamers out because we might need you in the morning. 
and I went down to Bristol. Um, I could have got four or a few overs before lunch. Got some wickets. Finished up with four, I think four wickets in the innings or something. Hmm. Um, and they never mentioned not bowling spin, uh, not bowling seam again. That was it, forgotten. Uh, and I played the rest of the season and I mixed spin and seam. And my batting was coming on, and I finished up. I got capped at the end of that year. Um, yeah, and that was a special moment. You know, we talk about um, international caps. <clears throat> it's getting to me now. Getting your county cap, yeah. going into the the committee room, and the club president awarding you with your cap, and all your your teammates around you. Special moment. Um, so that was a transformation for me from somebody whose career was drifting to all of a sudden eighty seven. Mm. you're in there and then I was that cricketer of all seam and spin I was in three day cricket I was third spinner and second uh, third seam at second spinner mm. depending what the state of the game was and I batted wherever you also wanted me to bat five six nice. seven absolutely I batted, nice. I, I bat wherever yeah um, and because of that versatility I then became use uh, very useful to the team mm. because it meant that you could you know, you could have play an extra batter, extra bowler, and it worked okay. Um, but that, did it make me a bit some pieces cricket or what? But it, it made me somebody who did, did a variety of things. And it was only when I became a bit more specialised as a spin bowler in the early 90s, and I didn't bowl much seam in county cricket, even though I bowled, I bowled seam up in one-day cricket, because that's where my experience in one-day cricket was. Um, and the, the, I started getting quite a few people out with spin. I would still concede runs. As <laughs> you'd still be behind the stumps. We were a team when when you were behind the stumps. I felt me and you we are a team. You know, we would create pressure on the batsman. We would make him feel uncomfortable. But you would give me feedback all the time on um, you bowling too quick, you bowling too slow, you bowling too wide. That's and right. that feedback was really valuable to me. Um, and I also had was bowling at the other end creating a pancake with this follow through for me to aim at there was this big big hole in the floor <laughs> that i could try and hit and i knew that if it was outside austin was going to slide on if it hit this big crater that he made it was going to jump and kick um that helped me and that was the the vehicle for me to get picked for england but i was 34 35 by the time i'm making your me england debut and um, we had the young spin twins of uh, Watkinson and Embury <laughs> taking on. Um, it, it's a dream debut, though. You're playing against, I only, I only played four tests, three against the West Indies in this country. Um, but my debut at Old Trafford, and we won. Yeah. So, you know, you test matches, you, you treasure wins. But to win on your debut, to get a couple of wickets, I think I got 38 with a bat, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, walking out in Old Trafford, packed house, getting. I can remember before the game, uh, Adders was captain, and he walked into the dressing room the morning of the game and said, um, "You're playing today." And I thought, "That's it. Whatever happens here, nobody's yeah. taking this. <clears throat> nobody's taking this moment away." No. Nope. Um, I'm 35. If I don't play again, it doesn't matter. If I get banged all over the park, so what? But you're never having this cap back. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. And the first, you, you bowled thousands and thousands of balls in your life. Yeah. And you're given the ball in the test match. And you first, you, you look down the pitch and Keith Arthurton squeezing the glue out the handle. And <laughs> the, the pitch looks about nine inches wide. <laughs> <laughs> and the first, I'm thinking, just land your first ball, just get it somewhere near. And I bowled five reasonable dots and he's blocked them back. The sixth ball was a bit full, it was a low full toss. It finished up in a dustbin on Warwick Road Station. <laughs> I thought, not a good start. <laughs> Brilliant, but, but the sense, sense of humour has always been part of your game, Wink, and you, you, you moved on from, from um, from from being in that dressing room, being an integral part, and, and you you went into your coaching role. But, yeah. but, but I, start, I always I always knew that you because because of the processes you put yourself through as a player, I always knew that you would you would make the transition into a into a into helping others with their game and and, yeah. and organising and stuff. And I mean, 
we, we, let's touch on dressing room banter again. One thing that I always giggle about is that after a day's after a day's play, wherever we were around the county scene, you know, I'd be sitting in the dressing room and we're having a good day or a bad day, and you'd call me in. You'd say, "Chucky, can I just have a word with you, sir?" And you'd be in the bathroom, and I think, well, he's probably going to give me some wise wise words of you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, you know, to, to well kept today, or you know, when you were batting, you looked a bit leg side of it. But no, you you'd call me into the bathroom while you were having a shave to show me how many whiskers were left in the bowl when you had a shave. You had that many. <laughs> like, oh God, I thought you were going to tell me something useful. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know what you're like now, Warren, but you needed a shave about once every six weeks then. <laughs> 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 and used to get teased about it that but it was hard school wasn't it you know i remember um it, we had all those cinema seats and if people were chatting behind you and you turn around to join in you get to, to told to face the front wouldn't you? <laughs> and then them early days them yeah, early face days. the front oh we, we used to pass ourselves and go does he really mean it? Really... Yeah, <laughs> well, it, was, it was knock on the door you can't come in the you can't come in the changing rooms so you'd think of bits of fun and banter. Yeah. Um, Simo was at the heart of, or, or the receiving end of, of a lot of it. Just he just had to be abnormal, and he was he was funny. He was hilarious. Yeah. Um, I thought I thought when I knew we were going to have a chat this morning, I thought Simo, he's just he was everything in in that dressing room. Yeah. Um, you, you'd love him. You'd fall out with him. You'd laugh at him. You'd everything. Um, and I, I was I was going through my mind about games I played with Simo, and we played at um, where did we play at, uh, at Brighton against Sussex, and Jack had his theories when he bowled spin, and he hated other spinners getting wickets and him not. And we went through a period where where bowlers used to get wickets with arm balls, off spinners are getting wickets with arm balls all the time, and and Jack got annoyed about this, and and he said, right, I'm going to start bowling loads of arm balls. Umpires love it. As soon as they get on the pads, it's out. So I'm going to bowl arm balls all the time. Let's see if it happens to me. <laughs> so we, we, we go out, we play it at Sussex, we're in the field, Jack's bowling. He has his short leg and he keeps bowling his arm ball. But it's starting leg stump and not swinging very much. And they're sweeping the out of it. And short leg is getting peppered. He's getting murdered. And we, we had about three carried off injured because they were getting it, and Sean is 12th man, and, and Sean finishes up at short leg, right, and they're whistling this side of him, that side of him, because Jack's trying this arm ball all the time, and they're sweeping it, uh, and, and Sean in the end goes, he said, Jack, he said, I'm getting peppered here, he said, why don't you ha have a signal when you're going to bowl the arm ball, then I can stick my head up my backside, I can retreat a little bit, and life's a bit safer for me. So, so Jack goes, right, okay, Sean, I'll sort it out next door. But when I bowl my arm ball, I'll give you a signal. And before every ball, Jack used to blow on his hands, didn't he? Like that. So he gets to the end of his mark, he goes, yes, his finger goes, swinger! And sh shouts, swinger, all round, all round the ground, and the batsman, it, Jack, a signal means that you don't tell the batsman what's happening. You've told the entire ground it's coming. And we're like, play had to be held up because everybody was just laughing so much at, at Jack's subtle signal. <laughs> you, you, you tell some great stories about, about Simo as well. Like you said, the times we had with him in the dressing room, we, didn't, we, left, him in, we left him in the tee at one time, didn't we, at Lytham? Oh, we left we, the, the bonds of Ellswick tent at, at Lytham. That's right. Uh, yeah. Oh, all this. With he was in, in there eating his goose gob pie, wasn't it? Gooseberry <laughs> pie. He was having it with all the fresh cream on, and we went straight from the tent out onto the field. He missed the first over because he was finished his pie and was bollocking us for not telling him. Um, he's late for Sunday league game because he fell asleep in the hotel. That was our fault as well. He could have been dead. He said, "I could have been dead." Leaving me there. Well, Jack, you fell asleep. You missed the start of the game. I could have been dead. <laughs> I remember, brilliant. Really, he was, he was, he's, you know, he's our, one of my favourite people in the world, is Simon. Yeah. I spoke to him yesterday. Yeah. He's, in, he's in great form. But yeah. Wink, we can't, we can't finish this chat before um, 
77 years since Lancashire won uh, won a championship outright, and, and you were you were head of cricket uh, in 2011 when 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 Glen Chapel and, and his team uh, under Morsey at the time won that That's right. yeah. won that title. That must have been a real proud moment, and and capped off everything for you. You won everything as a as a domestic cricketer. Yeah, we chased the championship forever. How we never won it, I have no idea. No, Some of the teams it. we had with, yeah. uh, you know, overseas players, Merylithran, Akram, the, mm. the strength of domestic players we had, um, Crawley, Harve, others, yeah. Galleon, Digger, yeah. Chapel, unbelievable yeah. players, Daffy in there, yourself. Yeah. You know, the, the list is endless. And why did we not win a championship? It's really hard to put your finger on it and it, it used to we carried it around on our back for a, a long time and we uh, we had those fantastic one day successes but the championship it just always eluded us and I think I think what was a catalyst was was redeveloping the stadium um, with no money um, the, uh, the the planning application had dragged we lost our budget we we took on two overseas players, Janaid Khan and Farbiz Maharouf. They were the um, they were played less than anybody else in the squad. Yeah. Um, we had a really low low salary bill, and we and we played seven seven games or eight games, whatever it was, at, at Liverpool. Um, and we um, we spent a bit of money refurbing the pitches there, whilst the the stadium was being turned round at Old Trafford. Um, yeah. And I think we had that bit of a siege mentality where, you know, it's going to be a tough year. We're going to have to work hard. And we reviewed everything that we did. Anything that we'd just done because we'd always done it, we didn't do anymore. And is this going to be a good idea? Are we going to spend money on this? No, we're not going to do it. We're going to spend money on something else. Um, or we're going to save the money. And it finished up with just, we got the momentum going in that last game at Somerset, um, talking about nerves. Um, I was watching fishing up behind the stand and in the in the river there. I was watching everything, but the the relief and the emotion when we won that championship was was unbelievable. And um, you know the <clears throat> the volume of um, of interest and support we got from around the county. You know, you get you get into the dressing room straight away. I look at my phone for a message. Nobby Styles. <laughs> Great stuff, lads. Now I'm thinking, he's won a World Cup, this bloke, and he's telling them, well done, you finally won the championship. <laughs> Not the styles here, lads. <laughs> you know, Brilliant. Just, yeah, unbelievable moments. Great stuff. That that that's that's brilliant. I'm, and I'm, and yeah, you know, like you said, it was proud for everyone involved with the club, not just players and and backroom staff yeah. and people involved with cricket, but but the conference yeah. and events girls. You know that the, the the people worked selling um selling tickets and hospitality. It was a really proud moment for everyone and something that yeah, yeah. everybody at the club. It was um you know big big family. Everybody worked together. I remember, you know the coaches. Um, when they would they would leave Old Trafford off for the big games, we were we were being applauded off by the the rest of the staff who were being left behind, who were were, were keeping the the club ticking over whilst we were away playing games. It was the the stadium was a building site then, so yeah. we weren't we weren't in Old Trafford all that much that year, but um, but it was very special. Brilliant. Thanks, Warren, and to the Lancashire members, to all the Northwest cricketing fraternity. Um, cricket will come back. Um, look after yourself, stay safe, um, and there'll be some good cricket coming up soon.